That's the sooty and sweep game on the Spectrum playing there. It's really an excuse to play the theme music. Because that's my sex music, that is. Yes, it's half a minute long. But that suits me, and it suits her, because she normally wants to get it done and leave by the time she finds out that I have the sooty theme as my sex music. Hmm. Sooty was a near-mute yellow ham puppet that uh, initially made an appearance on a local TV talent show in 1952, with his lower aperture fully filled by the clasping fist of magician Harry Corbett. Sooty's cheeky nature and parlour tricks were a hit with the viewership, and they soon became regulars on the BBC show Saturday Special. To better stand out on the black and white televisions of the time, Corbett applied soot to the ears and the nose of Sooty to make him stand out, and that is how he got his distinctive moniker. Sooty was later joined by various other characters, the most successful of which were the irritating, squeaking, petulant Beagle Sweep and the boring, moody, funkular Sue, a panda gifted with the power of human vocal cords and impressively well-spoken English diction. Sooty was eventually transferred to ITV in 1967 and Harry's son, Matthew, soon took over the ursine manipulation in 1976. With Matthew in charge, the format changed to a a weird sitcom where the puppets lived in a house, uh, within a house, and we got to see more of their legs, and it's weird. And this scene in particular makes me feel creeped out, and I don't like it whatsoever. Just look at it. Sooty is still a fixture on ITVB, with Matthew Corbett's son Richard Cadell now interfering with the yellow fella's undercarriage. With 850 episodes in the bag as of 2018, it is the second longest running children's show in the world after Blue Peter, a show which hangs about despite no children I've ever met ever admitting to liking it. Alternative Software, that absolute budget license spewing machine, released a tie-in game based on Sooty in 1989. That game was Sooty and Sweep. Sooty and Sweep was developed by Enigma Variations, who are responsible for a clutch of games that we've already covered on this here channel if you want to watch them. Games such as Hong Kong Fooey, Wacky Races, the official Father Christmas game, Count Duckula and Gilbert Escape from Drill. And they uh, developed versions of the game for all of the major computer formats of the time. Alternative and Enigma Variations also put out an educational title based on Sooty the following year called Sooty's Fun with Numbers. Sooty's Fun with Numbers used assets from the Sooty and Sweep game And no, I'm not going to play it because I'm very aware of playing a maths game set up for under sevens and um, showing myself up. If you would still like to see me playing a confusing edutainment title aimed at children, I did play Ormond Cheap recently and it uh, simply ended up confusing me. There's a link up there for it. The 1989 Sooty and Sweep game, though, it has the extraordinarily deep, complex and dramatic plot that you would expect for a creature that is from the same species as the animal that bummed Leonardo DiCaprio in that film, The Revenant. Do you remember that? He got bummed. I think he's supposed to be getting torn apart, but it's like he was getting bummed. So the uh, groundbreaking plot is that Matthew has gone out and he's left Sooty in charge of the house. And just to stop it there, now chronologically, Sooty is around 30 to 40 at the time this came out. But isn't he a child in the sooty verse canon? Isn't this incredibly irresponsible parenting? Or is this just like leaving your pets at home? I don't know. Anyway, unfortunately, Sweep has thrown bones all over the house and escorted a ton of creepy crawlies into the house from the garden. And so rather than taking a punishment beating from the terrible parent Matthew Corbett, Sooty elects to help Sweep find all the bones... Um, in the house before Matthew returns 
I'm not sure what they're planning to do with the creepy crawlies. The game doesn't seem to care, so we'll just ignore it. I will, however, say that I understand why Matthew would be annoyed to find bones all over the house. It's not like Sweep's just left them about, is it? To get them onto those high shelves, to get them in those high places, Sweep must have been lobbing them around um, to end up where they are. And who knows, perhaps Corbett is planning on bringing home a Tinder date. And uh, let me tell you, it's very hard to explain to dates why you have carcass remains all over your house. More so than when you play the sooty theme when you're planning to, uh, and how do we put this, uh, put fist into glove puppet. No wonder there's a bottle of Jack Daniels in the loft for Corbett to drink when Sweep's behaviour becomes too much. He's not right, is he? Corbett's house, where the creatures reside, is a fairly sizeable upper-middle-class dwelling uh, from the look of this game. As you know what? He's got 16 rooms, uh, and one of them is a larder, a room type that most of us haven't seen unless we've gawped our way around some old National Trust ancestral dust-gathering home. You can play as Sooty or Sweep, and you must collect bones in each room and hand them to Sue, who just sits there on her ass waiting for you to give her the bones because she gets preferential treatment and won't get beaten because she's a speaking panda and there's money to be made from that. Probably. I'm sort of inventing my own canon now. And as there's been 50 years of it, perhaps I should just shut up. You can either play as Sooty or Sweep, and both if you have a friend. But if you do, why are you making them play Sooty and Sweep games on a ZX Spectrum? They uh, only wanted to have a cup of tea and talk about their other half's colon operation. What are you doing? This two-player mode is competitive cleaning, as the pair compete for the highest score. Competitive cleaning, that sounds like it's Sue's idea. Sue is smart. Sooty can uh, fend off the snails and bugs with dark magic which he potentially has sold his little bare soul for. Sweep uses water which is something you can get from the tap, soul intact and left untouched by the ancient ones that rule above us and will one day rise again. Sooty and Sweep is a flip screen collect -em up then uh, with the option of an easy or hard mode. Easy mode means infinite health, though you still have to contend with the relentless passage of time that leads to the incoming wrath of Corbett's bone rage. And also, less bones for you to collect. Um, so, um, as I wanted my life hassle-free while searching uh, the home for these bones, I'll put it on easy. So what do we get for our £2.99 investment? You get a fairly generic Enigma Variations platformer, that's what. While the house is large, it's not got the scale of a Jet Set Willy, uh, there's no need for a map. You can jump around fairly simply, and the 10 minute time limit is plenty of time to collect all of those there, them bones. What I've found will scupper you on your first playthrough, and I'm pretty sure most people get this scuppering, is that the pint size pair uh, have a Dalek-like aversion to stairways. You spend ages trying to leap up some twixt-floor preambulatory platforms to no avail. Up, diagonally up, jumping, no control seems to work. Nothing works. In the end, you have to give it a rest and go and have a look um, for what the solution is. And instead of pressing up to go upstairs, you press down. To interact with stairs, you press down no matter what direction. So you press down to go up. What a pig of a control design decision. Get it all done and you get a generic well done message and Matthew won't stomp an additional hole in your fluffy ass. I'm sorry if I've built up the idea that Matthew Corbett abuses children and animals. He doesn't. I have nothing to back that up. I hope this doesn't end up in the hands of his lawyers. He was a dear sweet man um, and uh, his son is doing tremendous work, I assume. Um, Sooty and Sweep is a pretty standard budget fare. No better or worse than the myriad other titles on the WH Smith cassette shelf of the time. I've played it and I'll probably forget about it until I do a final ranking video of all the TV show Spectrum times 
at the end of this process, which is still some way off. As far as I can find, only your Sinclair reviewed it, and they stated that the Sooty and Sweep game is so repetitive and weak that you really won't give a monkey's great license, shame about the game, and they gave it a 49 degrees. I think they're being slightly harsh there. It wasn't brilliant, but it's not that bad either. Developer Clockwise were commissioned by Alternative to work on a Sooty and Sweep 2, but a dispute between the two companies meant the completed game never appeared. Co-programmer Dean Hickingbottom said the ZX Spectrum version was ported to the Amstrad CPC. There were also Commodore 64 and Atari versions. The game was never released due to a dispute between Alternative and Clockwise. I've already said that, Dean. And that there, then, is another Spectrum game done that was based on a TV show. Izzy Wizzy, let's get busy. Tap, tap, to tap, 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 tap. Hey, thanks, bye.